Hey, it's Natasha. And Khalil. And we are the co-hosts of Woke, Woke and Free. Free. Thank you, thank you, thank you for tuning in to our 116th episode of Woke and Free. If you've been tuning in every week for Woke and Free Wednesday, you know that Woke and Free is all about being real and honest with each other and you. We talk about everything and anything important to us you, the world, and nothing is off the table. This week, we're talking all about why people, product, and process matter. But before we dive deep into the subject, y'all know what time it is. It's my monologue time. So (laughs) let's get started. First, if you are listening to this on our, on the Podbean app, Yay, because that means you downloaded it and you're listening. And that also means you can comment. So that's really, really exciting. And if you're like, what are you talking about, Natasha? Go to WokenFree.com and then you will be instructed to do that by getting the Podbean app. Also, if you are not necessarily listening on Podbean, but maybe you're catching us on iTunes, you're catching us on Spotify, you're catching us on SoundCloud, you're catching this on iHeartRadio or any of the other platforms, yay to you, but also make sure that you're subscribed and following the show on any of the other platforms that we're on so that you will get updated with all our upcoming episodes. And if you're like, Hmm, where are all the other platforms that you can catch the show? If you go to WokenFree.com and you click on the Listen tab, you'll see all the different platforms that we're on. So please do that if you are not already aware of where you can catch the show. Next, we are no one's dirty secret. Please share this episode out. Tell your friends. You know Woken Free is lit. So please share it out. We would greatly appreciate your support. And then of course, on social media, if you do have breaking news, if you have episode ideas, or if you just want to chat, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and even YouTube at Woken Free. And then lastly, we would love for you to take a couple of minutes of your time and review the show. We have a five-star rating on iTunes. Let's see if we can get more <laughs> ratings on all the other platforms and even more ratings on iTunes. So please take a couple of minutes of your time, review the show, tell us how you really feel. We deeply, deeply, deeply appreciate all the love and support that you've given us along the way and will continue to give us. Each week, we like to share a little bit about us before we dive into the topic for the episode. Last week, we shared what's cozier in the fall, flannel shirts or flannel sheets. This week, we were asking, what are your go-to boots for cooler weather? Hmm. So for me, I'm definitely a big fan of Ugg boots, but I am not a fan of Ugg price point. Sorry, guys. So you (laughs) definitely will find me in the cheaper fashionable alternative of Bear Paw boots. Uh, thankfully from Costco, actually. <laughs> so I, uh, I, but they, they definitely like, I run through them very quickly. So I, I think I'm down to like one, but I don't know how much I'm going to need them now in, uh, in hot Arizona. But yeah, shout out to Bear Paw. I really love their boots. How about you? I have to just keep it classic. So I get the Timberlands or the Tims, as they like to say. Ah, classic yeah. Tims. Nice. It's just, it's easy. Queens in the house. Woo, woo. But I get the, I don't get the classic big boot ones. I know. Anymore. I don't get oh, those good. ones that they used to wear in the 90s. I don't get those. Is that the steel toe one or no? No, they're no, not. Okay. I don't think they're steel toe, really. Okay. I mean, I, know I think they offer. Hard toe, yeah, though. it's hard, but it's not steel toe. No, okay. you have to actually buy a brand made for that. That's the funny thing. Timberlands aren't the best boots you can get. They're the most fashionable, though. <laughs> I always used to slip for in men. the snow and weather. Yeah, they're not. That's the, why I didn't really. Yeah, yeah they're mm-hmm. not the best for boot. But they're very boots, stylish but, if you're going for that, yeah. like, I'm a young rapper kind of look. But you can, I mean, they have other styles that look pretty good they too. Do. And they're they not do. like so urban looking, I guess. They are, yeah. Or, yeah, I don't get but the But I classic. remember that craze though. That was nuts. Yeah, where everyone was wearing that. Oh, now gosh. I think it's, I think that's died down a lot now. Definitely. I mean, that's not yeah, the that's big thing anymore. Taking it back. But shout out to Timbaland. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, I just, I stick with them. And for my other boot needs, I get whatever boots will suit. But. Mm-hmm. Timberlands is the one that I go to. That's where you go. Nice. Yeah, that's my first. Now we'll just jump into the episode. Woohoo! What is the importance of people, product, and process? 
Well, funny that you should ask, <laughs> given that it's the topic of the episode. So uh, I think for us, or for for what I've interpreted at least, is this really comes, this is a three-part formula that comes from Marcus Lamones of The Prophet, and he's a wildly successful serial entrepreneur who is worth goop gubs of money, and he shared this, he shares this uh, philosophy and this formula in his show, The Prophet. And if you guys click on the links, you'll find all of our like links uh, at WokenFree.com. We have a link that kind of details this uh, philosophy of his. And it's really the key to business success. And really, I think it just, it, it's simple. It's, it's simplistically perfect. <laughs> and it makes so much sense because those are the primary functionalities of how a business can go under and then also how it can really thrive if you pay attention to what needs to be paid attention to. But why do you think it matters? Well, I think just looking at each of the three ideas is what the key to the whole formula is. So people is your team and employees, and that's pretty much critical to how the business runs and Mm -hmm. continues even after like unforeseen circumstances. So people are the, it's, it's the team that keeps the business going in the hard times, you know, when you hit a rock when mm-hmm. maybe, you know, so, something gets, some of your machinery gets damaged or there's a storm and it runs down your building, your people are who can get you back up and running really quickly. So mm-hmm. that's why people I think is important to that formula. Product is important because is the product or service that you're act- offering, is that actually any good? If it's not good, then I know what's the purpose of this. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So that's why product is important in the formula. And then process is important because it's the, what it asks you is, are you being the most efficient in creating that, the product? Are you have a step by step method where you can acquire customers? And do you know how you can now get them like familiar with your service? And Mm -hmm. how do you close the deal? So I think you know, the process part is just as important as the other two because mm-hmm. it's about being efficient and saving, like cutting your your costs for your business while making this product or offering the service. So mm-hmm. each of those three things are very valuable. And, mm-hmm. you know, it, it just keeping it just to those simple things kind of lets you know what to hone in on when you're starting your business or even just when you're running your business. I think it's Mm-hmm. Definitely, it simplifies the whole thought of running a business and what do you need to do. It tells you what to kind of like focus on. So that's mm-hmm. that's what I like about the the formula. I would also add that he in the people conversation he also has talked about, especially on the show, the profit, the the idea of people also being the customer that you have to be a customer centric kind of run business that like ultimately who's you're not paying for yourself someone else's so think about the customer what what makes the the process easier for them what makes the product something they need and want so you know it's interesting I think people even breaks down to the people who are supporting you and running you but also who's the person you're serving how are you oh, serving really? them I, I feel like the people of the customer like the you customer, think customers included in people well I, what I'm saying is I, if you remember from the show we've watched the show he also talks about the customer's perspective right like remember he when he goes and he sees like a crazy menu what does he always say he says what's the customer gonna think about this right like he comes from the perspective of also saying people yes you got to support your employees you got your employees have to feel supportive and supported and they have to feel a part of the process and that they're valued but then also the other side of people is like who are we doing this for, right? Like the well, customer was, has to make sense. What I was thinking in terms of the people was just, do you have the right people on your team? Because yeah, sometimes you have definitely. people that just aren't for the business. They're just there because they just... Family they, or <laughs> circumstance. Yeah, yeah he shows they're that hoping the, for a payoff or something. Yeah, you know, that's they're just, definitely... They're not really... Right. They don't believe in the business. They're just kind of there hoping for something big to happen, but they don't want to put in work. So, I mean, I see that Or they're kind of jaded. He's, he's shown people who, yeah. yeah, they were good and then... Sometimes and, people yeah. are... then It's a like a angel investor sometimes yeah. that just kind of like was waiting to get their money back. Mm-hmm. It, it can be different things, so... That's what I didn't. I don't. I never thought of people as like the customer. I think the people, the customer aspect, 
I that think filters like through thing. process and product, but yeah, I think see. I still think it's a part of the conversation. So I think that ultimately Maybe. you have to you're doing this for someone to purchase, right? Someone's purchasing a product or a service. So that's, so yeah, you, you know, I think that falls under the product because that's where you kind of get into what do like all right, you're offering one million SKUs. This is your product. What your product is like all over the place. Yeah. I'm a customer. I don't but understand it, I just, your product. I just wanted to throw it out there all just right. so people understood that the Maybe customer that still. It's a customer. You important. have to be a customer centric business. Product. Yeah. Like you can't. You're not paying for yourself. So yeah. someone else is doing this. So we have to remember that person. That's yeah. Yeah. It's definitely important. Mm-hmm. So ultimately, why do you think businesses fail to focus on this like really easy formula when it comes to their own business? Well, the simple answer is they don't even know the formula. <laughs> <laughs> nice. When I mean, I, mean, I didn't go to school for business, but I don't mm. think I don't think they're going to teach something like in three words and say this is what you got to know. I don't. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know. I'm mm-hmm. I'm just taking a guess. I don't think that's what they teach in no I don't in business that, classes. That I don't think they're going to go idea. that. They're going to no. teach you about <laughs> economics and. They're going to teach you probably about margins Price and structure things. structure and margins and, yeah. Customer acquisition. Yes. So, so and, you'll learn about the, these these other sorts of ideas, but you won't learn just like uh, three simple phrases to keep in mind mm-hmm. when you're running your business. So I think that's a big thing. And then even a bigger thing is like besides business classes, most of these business businesses that are started, those people don't take any business classes. They just start a business start based off business. a product. Yeah. Most businesses are based off of a product. So the product comes first mm-hmm. and they're like, oh, wow, people like this product. I'm, I just should sell it. Or mm-hmm. oh, I, I want to make this product work because I want to work for myself. So mm-hmm. I think businesses kind of, s- s- <laughs> these businesses that don't make it, they start off on the wrong foot and then they never yeah. find any footing. You know, They just start off on, hey, we have a product and we're going to just get this to market however we can and we're going to make it work no matter what but we're not going to look into how we can make this business run better like that's what i think the issue is i think businesses don't look into where can we improve they mm-hmm. say oh you know this works so i'm going to continue to do this even though it might not be working perfectly or they're actually losing money every year they're like hey i'm bringing in cash so that's what counts <laughs> like they don't yeah. they don't look at the the bigger picture or the 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 finite like actual numbers of what they're earning they just say oh mm-hmm. i'm getting cash every year that's good enough for me yeah i don't care what money i owe so they don't know this formula they just work off i have a product i sell it and i'm getting cash for it that's Absolutely. that's good enough yeah. for me there's a lot of businesses that do that that's the thing there's some businesses that have business plans and they actually have ideas on how to improve their whole process and everything but I don't think most businesses do that, to be honest. There's Mm -hmm. a ton of businesses out there, and there's businesses that aren't even on the books, so (laughs) that's the thing. All right, you're going to a different level, so now I'm jumping in. You can't jump in on a a Timbaland like that. Are you finished? in person like that. Are you finished? I'm finished. I'm taking off these Tims now. Fantastic. So (laughs) I think that businesses fail to focus on the three-part formula for a couple of reasons. First, I definitely agree. Ignorance of the formula. I myself have taken business and law classes in college, and I definitely do not recall this being uh, kind of a... uh, a memorable phrase or even talked about in in that simplistic functionality. I think different components, yes, uh, have been talked about, but that formula is definitely not something that I think is like breathed down people's throats. So I think that he should totally uh, teaching courses and uh, maybe even tr- like, I don't know, find a way to to get just a course going on that because I think that people would really benefit from learning that three-part formula if they aren't already watching the show. It still could be elaborated in greater detail. Also, I think that when it comes to business, there's a lot of moving parts and people sometimes don't necessarily have the right people in place to be able to focus on those on the three different parts. So you have people, product, process. You need someone who's going to steer <laughs> the the ship in each of those arenas. Either it's going to be one person or three people or how many other people you need to, to focus and take a self audit and assess what are the achievements, what are the victories, but then also what are the challenges in each of those arenas and then create an action plan and then put it into place. You have to have people doing that. So sometimes, especially with like solopreneurs, people just one person running the yeah. show 
you are you really going to take the time to stop being in your business to work on your business? I think that that's the issue. And so people aren't uh, prioritizing <laughs> how to grow in their business because they're too busy focused in in it and just like I gotta send these emails I gotta pitch I gotta and they're not really focused on the bigger picture of their business also uh, some people aren't aware that there's a disorder some people are a little delusional right and they're like no everything's working everything's right and it's like maybe yeah that's what I was saying yeah maybe not maybe there is disorder when it comes to the product maybe there is disorder when it comes to the people. Maybe there's disorder across the board. You gotta, you gotta be, uh, you gotta be real. I think, uh, generally in life, people who can have a really good sense of reality, <laughs> I think, have an easier time of, uh, self auditing and making changes. Cause guess what? Nothing's perfect. So we all can improve something. And I know that might be hard to hear, but it's just the reality. Nothing is perfect. So everything can have tweaks. Everything could be a little bit better. And then procrastination, right? Maybe you do know, oh man, I got to work on this element of my business, but you're just like, oh, next month. Oh, the holidays are coming up. Okay, I'll put it in the new year, right? And you keep pushing it back. And then all of a sudden, five years down the road, you realize you've run your business into the ground because you didn't take the time to work on this formula. And some people also, I think, fail because they just don't know where to start. Maybe they're like, okay, I see all the deficiencies. Now what? Right. Do they get a consultant? Do they try to figure it out? Do they just don't know where to go? And so some, some people, if they don't know how to start, they just don't. Instead of being scrappy, which you would say, Hey, if you're an entrepreneur, you should be scrappy. Not all entrepreneurs are scrappy. And some people would rather throw a checkbook at something than to actually sit down and work and do the work. And that's unfortunate. And, and they have to pay the cost for that. And then, uh, also, I think the other thing is some people are aware of the problem, but they just, you know, they, they're struggling to find a way to fix it, to find the solution. So they're, it's not that they're putting it off, but they're just like, but, and, and they're waiting for this answer. So those are some reasons I think why people are struggling to really tackle this formula and put it into practice for their own business. Hey there, do you have a book that you want to share with the Woken Free Nation? Are you a business owner looking to share your product or service with the podcasting world? Well, guess what? You can book an ad with us on our Contact Us page at WokenFree.com. We're super excited to speak with you about curating a unique ad that will get your message across the Woken Free platform. So go to the Contact Us page at WokenFree.com. That is W-O-K-E-N. F-R-E-E.com because Woken Free is more than a podcast. It's a way of life and offers an innovative way to promote your platform in the exploding podcasting space. All right. Well, do you agree then with this three-part formula for business success? You think businesses could actually learn something from following this? Love the energy in that question. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, yeah, truly riveted for my answer, <laughs> I could see. Yeah, I'm for waiting for it. sure. I think that there's there's not one way to succeed, but I do think if you had to simply break down what does it take to succeed in business uh, for ourselves, for our experience so far with entrepreneurship, I think we definitely could see the idea of the value of investing time and energy and resources in this three-part formula. The people matter as in who you're working with, as in who you're investing in. The product itself has to make sense. It has to be clear and it has to be needed by the customer. And the process has to be seamless. Whenever you have kinks in the process, you what? You make your life more hectic. You make the customer's life potentially more hectic and it can cost you business. So are there more elements that you could throw into the formula? Of course there are. But I think if at the bare minimum, if you can capture and really work that system to the most efficiency as possible, I think you have a really good chance of being a very, very successful business. Yeah, I think it's just the simplest way to gauge how well your business is structured and then where you actually have room for improvement. It's a way to just nail down on those uh, areas. So follow this first. It might not, it's not like the catch all solution just Mm -hmm. because you, now you know this, you know, now your business is successful. I don't think it's that simple, but 
at least now you know areas to look at because mm-hmm. I don't think people know where even to start. But these this gives you a solid starting point because you got three areas that you can look at yep. and you can see where you can improve in those areas. Absolutely. And you can actually grade yourself on how you're doing right then. So that's what I, that's what I like about his three-part formula. Mm-hmm. It lets you know where to start when you're looking at like revitalizing your business or just doing a self-check on how your business is going. Definitely. I mean, it's like this time of the year, you know, people like to, some companies like to do like end of year reviews and stuff like that. So that formula is a great little internal check that you can go through and say, hey, let's look at people product process and give yourself, yeah, give yourself a grade A to F where you stand on each of those processes and then take the time to find the solutions necessary to clean things up. Because guess what, guys? We all have things to clean up. (laughs) I guess so. Get your life. (laughs) For sure. Here we go, yo. Here we go, yo. So what's what's, what's the scenario? It's scenario time, guys. Scenario one. Jalon makes the largest Belgian waffles the world has ever known. Unfortunately, he has a high turnover rate even though he just purchased a new waffle maker that makes waffles 40% faster than before. Which part of the people product process formula do you think is at the root of his problem? Mm, that's an interesting question. So uh, I like that he got a new machine, like he invested in his business to be to have a more efficient process. But having the high turnover rate indicates to me that there's definitely an issue with the people, but there still technically could be an issue with the process because yeah. just having a, a faster machine in and of itself doesn't mean your total process is worked out. Maybe there's other steps involved in the process of making making this wonderful waffle that's not going right which is affecting why people are like quitting like like what's that called oh gosh why they're quitting yeah like that they're quitting really quickly that they're just kind of like Uh, i'm out right like they're just leaving and and so you'd want to probably look at people and you'd want to look at process to assess uh what exactly is going on there okay so yeah i would think that I don't know if process is an issue, but I think people is definitely having an issue because you shouldn't have the 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 high turnover rate in mm-hmm. the waffle making business. This isn't used car dealership. All right, stop throwing shade for no reason. You don't no. even know a used car salesman. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm no, but I know that they have high turnover rates they for do. car de- car. But a lot of them are running on a commission only basis. That's yeah. why, which is really hard to keep people on a See? commission. But at least if you there, don't sell, it makes sense. then you have to you still have to eat. Like you- <laughs> <laughs> so you go somewhere else. You don't yes. make it work. How long would you like to starve? But how does going somewhere else guarantee that you're going to make more money? It doesn't staying? guarantee, but he, they could jump to something that go, offers base and commission. So then they can eat. Maybe that's what it could be. Yeah. But it's just funny to have a high turnover rate in certain industries and not in others. Yeah. It's how they run the industry. Yeah. Scenario two. Debbie has a small startup company that acts as a concierge service for people while they are out shopping. The idea is that while you shop, your personal concierge brings you clothes or whatever you are shopping for to put in your cart. Her business has been off to a slow start and was passed on by potential investors. What do you think the problem is with Debbie's business? So I think the biggest issue I'm seeing there is I'm not understanding the purpose. If you're already out shopping, then why do you need someone (laughs) putting something in your cart? (laughs) They're not even holding your cart. Like... It's like a Labrador retriever. That's yeah. That. Okay. Well, they I go retrieve the, the an item for you. Yeah, I don't. They retrieve the duck. So personally, when I'm <laughs> shopping, I either would want someone to do the shopping for me, so I don't have to do it, like a personal shopper, uh, or if they're assisting me, then they're holding the cart and they're also styling me and they're picking out the items. And then they're also charged with going on the line and paying for it and making sure they got all the coupons and all that. Like they're simplifying the process. So what we've learned, right, with entrepreneurship and business is you have to be solving a problem. This, her business isn't solving a problem. It's adding an extra problem to, <laughs> to the shopping. You think it's adding an extra problem. Yeah, because now you're out and you got this other person. And yeah. It's, it's too many chefs in the kitchen. You got to give the other person instructions to tell yeah, them what you want. That's And then they can go and find it for you. 
No, maybe you can do that if, like I said, you if you're going to give instructions, then they have to go and run the shopping process for you. They're not without you being physically yeah, there. Yeah, they're not run. They're not doing it with you. That's a waste of your time and their time. <laughs> <laughs> that's nonsensical. But, so that's I think she's lost. She's missed the mark on people, product, and process. Like it's, really. The whole kabam. I would uh, rethink the business. I would like to argue that okay. she just misses the mark on one big item, and that's the product. The product is no good. The product or well, service I just, is no I, good. Again, I don't see I can't say the solution. The people, so. the people are good. She has a great team with her of concierge that will help her out. The, the people are great. The process is decent. But the business purpose they know is, she is, has a smooth is sailing. messed up, though. But, the, yeah, the product is the problem here. There's no... It's like the product is not... Like I said, there is not no product, the best. so... <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a service. I'd rethink it, Debbie. <laughs> you would tell her to rethink her service. That's why it's Re- not doing well. Maybe rethink the service. Maybe the consumer... Like I said, if the consumer is home and they're no longer a part of the shopping process, here we go. But if they're coming along for this, and we've got to find a different, she's got to find a different product to offer, or service rather in this yeah. S- scenario. Yeah, definitely got to work on that mm-hmm. that service there. Scenario three: Tehumade runs a food business that delivers from the kitchen to customers' doorsteps. She has run into snags sometimes where customers' orders get mixed up. What is going on with her business? What does she need to do in order to eliminate these types of problems? Mm, interesting so uh i think there's a couple of things here so depends on how the order is being taken is it through an app is it through a website so what's the point of uh communication maybe that's where we're having the snagu happen and people are like either the system's messing up or the customer's inputting something wrong however the order is being taken that definitely would need to be looked at so process is that issue here and then also you'd want to look at people to make sure that the people delivering the food because sometimes the the order could be right but then if the person delivering the food is messing up and delivering Ann's food to Ben's house then that would be an issue right so making sure that the people and the process here is making sense and then as for business purpose I mean people are always looking to eat so I I don't necessarily know I don't think that I think that she could be solving a problem it just depends Business purpose what do you mean business purpose Like Why you know delivering that? I'm just saying just wondering just because you had another example of a, of a purposeless business uh, <laughs> <laughs> just That's crazy to say just There's a lot of businesses that exist out there that are just like that solving a problem that nobody ever knew they had So are they solving the problem <laughs> Or is it just a new problem <laughs> Hey. But here, I think ultimately this could, I'd want to know more, right? To just understand why her business, like if you want to, is this a she? Yeah. Okay. To understand if her business is going to be successful or not. But I, yeah, she's going to want to look at how the orders are taken and how the delivery is made. And uh, yeah, definitely make sure that she fix that soon because people don't play, people, you know, customers don't give you that many chances. So <laughs> Sometimes one mistake, that's all you get with them. Yeah, that's true. Especially when you're hungry. Mm, yes, and because then they become hangry. Mind, yeah, it can I know, be, I get hangry. can be rough business there. So I think the problem here is definitely process because mm-hmm. how come your delivery people are mixing orders up? Like they're delivering it to the wrong customer. I think there's an issue... I don't think there's a problem with the people. I just think there's a big problem with the process. Because if your process is good and you have decent people, it's going to work out. Like mm-hmm. You wouldn't even have to worry about that. You'd already know. You'd know when, there, when there's an issue, too. If it was a really good process, you, you would be able to identify Well, yeah, that. you would get feedback. You'd be like, so. oh, man, look look where we're failing right here. This is why you mixed up because, yeah. you know, the computer went down. <laughs> so you just picked up any order you wanted. <laughs> so, see, she needs to make sure that her process is... Right in check, and she's competing with DoorDash better. <laughs> she's got to make sure. Uh, no shade there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I didn't say it. I'm not saying anything else on that either. I just leave it at that. I bet you. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to say anything else. <laughs> I just mentioned because I, I know people would have something to say, but I just mentioning that this is just a competitor. Absolutely. That's all I'm saying. Absolutely. To her business, and she's got to work on her process so she can catch up. Get your life. (laughs) (laughs) 
hopefully she's successful and people get their right food. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be not lovely, right? Listen, I know when I order something and I do not get what I ordered, it is extremely frustrating because I'm very specific of an order. So yeah, you are. I, uh, I expect perfection. <laughs> Or confirmation. That's my whole thing. That people just hand you bags and they're like, here you go. But they don't confirm like before they hand you the bag. Like, okay, this is in here. This is, you know, I wish that they would like double check their work. I feel like people just do something. They once check, but they don't double they, check. Yeah. I wish double they check. Double check some places it. double check. Like if you go to a certain, like, yeah. Certain like Indian restaurants, sometimes they'll do that. It depends. Especially Thai when they have like weird, you know, like they just have these white you know containers and they don't write things, they don't label things. The more you pay, I find, the more they double check. Well, that makes sense. Yes. Yeah, like yes. when your order is over a hundred dollars, then they check that. They bag. better. They make sure they're not. They want to make sure they're not losing is anything. The lobster tail in here, excellent. <laughs> the lobster fragment. Ay ay ay. You wish you get a lobster tail for that. Yeah. <sighs> Well, not every, I mean, not here, maybe some places. We digress. <laughs> and it is that time again, the coming to the end of our 116th episode of Woke, Woke and Free. Free. Oh, good Lord. Pretty good. That was like a business type of uh, sound to it, right? It had a business ring to it. Uh, business of oh you know why it's like those <laughs> those economic commercials that they show economic commercials <laughs> are you talking about like state farm <laughs> no i'm just saying just in general oh. they're teaching about um money they have, yeah oh, you, oh so that was like a commercial that could have been played on cheddar yeah see <laughs> i mean they could have yeah they're probably gonna grab the sound bite shout out to cheddar if anyone yeah. has watched a cheddar commercial please put in the comments your thoughts because we're our mind is always blown <laughs> when we see a cheddar commercial that channel they're on they're different. something they are different guys yeah. different but we digress again. This was quite the episode discussing why people, product, and process matter. Will we leave you hanging for what our next episode will be about? Drum roll, please. On our next episode, we will be discussing, does a name determine the person? Make sure you follow us on social media to follow along in the conversation. Make sure you tune in next week for Woken Free Wednesday to join the conversation at WokenFree.com. If you'd like to be a guest on the show, definitely submit a topic for an upcoming episode or share how you feel on our Contact Us page at WokenFree.com. That is W-O-K-E-N-F-R-E-E.com. We are most likely taking guests for 2020, but if you have something really exciting, hit us up and let us know. If you want to hit us up on social media to share upcoming breaking news or thoughts that you have as well on an upcoming episode or something that is really important to you, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube at Woken Free. And sponsorships, advertising, guys, if you're interested in a personalized, curated ad, you guys know what you need to do. You need to hit us up on our contact us page at WokenFree.com. If you didn't already subscribe, please do share the episode and make sure you come back to join the conversation every Wednesday for Woken Free Wednesdays. Remember, Woken Free is more than a podcast. It is a way of life. Until next time.